I'm here to talk about breakthrough technology for cobalt analysis using handheld XRF. I'm sure you'll all be familiar with uh, some of our tools that we have. Uh, and we've got field portable tools that we provide to, uh, to mining exploration companies, um, such as what you're seeing there on the screen, which is a, a, a portable XRD. It's, um, it's NASA technology, and it'll you know, identify your, your minerals, your spodumene, your, your pitolite, um, graf total graffiti carbon, all that sort of thing. Um, and you'd all be familiar with handheld XRF. And for most of you in the room, you're thinking, oh, handheld XRF is no good for lithium, it's no good for cobalt. Um, so I'm here to talk about a breakthrough technology that we've had just recently uh, in the last couple of months on the use of handheld XRF for cobalt. So just outlining the benefits of handheld XRF, look, it provides very quick analysis in the field. You can start making some decisions straight away. Um, if you do all the sample prep, you will get lab quality data out of it, but that's not the point. The point is to have a quick look and see, um, be able to make some decisions right here and now without waiting for, for lab results back. And, you know, if you, pre if you prepare the sample well, you will get lab quality data, and this is actually really, really old handheld technology which you're seeing there compared to lab assay. Uh, it, it correlates very well uh, on, on you know, your base metals. But for cobalt, we all know that there's a problem analysing cobalt. The problem that handheld XRF has for cobalt is it sees it nicely, but if there's a couple of elements, naughty elements present, it becomes very hard to see it. And that those two elements are iron and nickel, and unfortunately, Fortunately, unfortunately, you, you explore for cobalt in a lot of situations where there is a lot of iron and a lot of nickel. So previously what's happened is when the analyzer sees the iron, depending on the brand you're looking at, it'll either turn off the cobalt so you don't see it at all, or you get a false positive for cobalt. So that doesn't really help you. You're looking to see if you've got any cobalt there and, and it's, it's associated with iron and nickel and, and you've got a big problem. Just a little bit of background about how energy dispersive XRF works. It essentially looks for energy peaks, uh, spectral peaks we call them. Every element that we look at is, we use one peak. So there's multiple peaks that we can get by shining X-ray light onto a sample. Um, we look at one of those peaks. And if there's another element that's present that has a peak right on top of that peak that we're looking for for cobalt, it, it can pose an issue. And it's not just cobalt that there's an issue with. Gold has issues with tungsten, lead, arsenic, zinc, selenium, the list goes on. So the big issue is iron has a, a large peak at 7.06 keV, which is close enough to interfere with cobalt's primary peak, which is the peak we'd like to use for cobalt. If we can't use that peak, we have to use the second peak for cobalt. Um, our ability to see cobalt at lower levels is diminished. So let's say we do have lots of iron, we try to use the second peak for cobalt. If nickel's present, it also has a peak that lies in the same vicinity. So essentially, it's very, very hard, and to date it's been nigh on impossible for handheld XRF to reliably detect cobalt in the presence of those two interfering elements. And um, just on that, I say to date no brand of PXRF has, has a reliable way around this. I used to represent Niton, I also represented another brand called Brooker, um, and this is the third brand I've represented, so I'm very familiar with the, the algorithms and the way they work, uh, and, and I can reliably say that. So you can see visually there, what you're looking at here is the primary peak for cobalt, which lies, sorry, the primary peak for iron, and then you've got the primary peak for cobalt, and you see if, if the iron's present, the cobalt peak is swallowed up. It's hard to see for the XRF. And this is just with a little bit of iron. This is 0.69% iron. So, in summary, when iron and, and nickel are there, um, the cobalt was supposed to say no good. <laughs> So we get false positives. So what we've been trying to do is work a, a way of being sure of the cobalt values for you guys. 
Um, we don't want to have to do too much sample preparation because then that defeats the purpose of having a, a very fast field portable tool. You might as well just send it to the lab. Uh, and we don't want to spend too much time doing multiple analyses using multiple methods. So about two months ago we released a new GeoChem method, which is GeoChem is the, is the algorithm we use for most of your sampling. And it's a, a specific method that deals with those interferences from iron and nickel on cobalt much better. I viewed it with a lot of scepticism when I saw it. Um, I've seen a couple of iterations of, of this method released previously. We tested them here in Australia and we found that there was still some issues with them. So when this one came, I was very keen to test it out on some samples and proof concept. So does it work? I approached two companies. One company had 50 samples that they'd used to prove principle on another handheld XRF brand that they'd purchased. Uh, that brand had promised them the ability to see cobalt when iron and nickel were present and didn't work. Um, I also analysed um, another set of 16 samples with significantly high iron, so really putting the algorithm to the test. Uh, and for your interest, the samples were pulverised samples back from the lab. They were put in XRF cups and I analysed them at 60 seconds per beam. No corrections were made and, uh, and no tweaking of the data. That's the setup. Uh, if you come to the booth, you'll see the new Vanta handheld XRF. That's a type of very small test stand that we have and you run it from your PC. That's the result from the 16, data, uh, 16 uh, sample data set with the, high, the very, very high iron. And as you can see, the cobalt is correlating very well with the lab. So this is the Vanta, the handheld XRF data on the x-axis and the lab data on the y-axis. And we've got a nice straight line there. Right down to low levels as well, which is very pleasing. You can see the spread of iron right up to knocking on the door of 50%. This is from the uh, data set I had with 50 samples. The iron wasn't as high with this, but there was also significant nickel. And this was particularly pleasing, especially down at the low levels. I know most of the time if, you're inter if, there's, if the cobalt's presenting as, as high grade, it's, it's going to be sort of on this end. But to be able to see it in exploration, to be able to see it at low levels when you've got lots of iron present is, um, is very, very promising. That's the iron results. Iron's always been really nice for handheld XRF, no problems with iron. But you can see the spread knocking on the door of 20% right down to low. And the nickel. So all three elements, uh, we'd expect iron and nickel to be presenting well, but uh, all three elements were tracking very, very well with, with the lab.